Yeah. Hey, welcome back to my home theatre. In this episode, we're going to talk about a long-term review on my Panasonic AE8000. But you might recall in the last one, I talked about how my daughter would help me reorganise DVDs. This is her idea of reorganisation. It's her, you, what you doing? Yeah, she knows she's in trouble. This is what she does to me, people. Look at what she's done. Purchased in September 2013, the Panasonic AE8000, weighing in at a hefty 8.7 kilograms, this projector is about 470 millimeters wide, 151 millimeters high, and 364 millimeters deep. With a native aspect ratio of 16 by 9, this 1080p 3D capable projector uses three transparent LCD panels to create a both beautiful, seamless, almost film-like experience. Let's start our review by looking at some of the basic functions. With motorized focus and zoom, this lens features an f-stop of 1.9 to 3.2 with an almost 100% zoom capability. Featuring an optical lens shift function, this projector can be positioned quite freely within any room with both front, rear, upside down mounting options available to you. Featuring multiple terminals, the projector has S-Video in, RCA, computer, component, three HDMIs, a serial, as well as a trigger. Now, to not bore you too much, I'll just quickly say this. The projector has a wealth of tools in which you can use to optimize it for your environment, from masking, lens control, positioning it, the lens shift, you name it, this projector will enable you to do what you need to do to get the best picture for your home theater. In the 18 months I've had this projector, I've never felt the need to actually go ask a professional installer to come in and do some color calibration and testing. What you get out of the box straight away is a projector that actually has about several different modes in which it changes both the luminosity to help you get over maybe a room that's got some light spillage into it, uh, but also in doing that it changes both the contrast, uh, the colors, the dynamic iris will help compensate for things to give you better blacks. And um, all in all, it's definitely a very impressive projector which I still think is very hard to beat. This is a Panasonic remote control. As you can see, you've got on off, lens, picture mode, picture adjustment, memory load, Viera link, um, which I don't use, it's only for Panasonic devices, waveform monitor, 3D, so you can turn any 2D into 3D, menu, default, up, down, left, right, sub menu, go back, input select and function. One of the things I don't like about this remote control is that there's no discrete input select infrared signal. So if you get the wrong input, what can happen is you might have to cycle all the way around until you get back to the correct input, which I think is rather poor. You can do picture adjustments. So here we're doing, you can see cinema mode one, so we can change things that way. Or by using the up and down arrows, we can go to dynamic iris on and off. I always keep that on because I find it produces very good blacks, sharpness, color temperature, tint, color, brightness. Memory load is if you've got an anamorphic screen, you can actually um, make it go back with a zoom and a focus just by um, pressing this one button. You need to save and set up first, but I don't have an anamorphic lens, so I don't use that. Uh, waveform monitor. So as you can see here, there's an auto adjust, which is qu quite cool. Um, you can change what mode it looks at. So red, green, blue. And then up here, we've got some very complicated algorithm, which I do not understand. And you can adjust the line, so it looks like there's some discrepancies there. So if I press auto start, um, it will move it. So let's see what we can do, eh? All right, here we go. Doing auto start now. 
Auto scan complete, save changes, we'll say OK. Now what did that do? No, I can't really tell, but it's supposedly done something. All right, so 3D, so any, um, let's get out of that. Any content that comes um, to it in 2D can be converted on the fly to 3D. By note, by the way, the uh, DVD player can do the same thing. So if I press the 3D, what it's going to do is it's going to, let me just focus that. What it's going to do is it's going to start um, turning 3D on. So as you can see, you've got some ghosting going on because it's um, shuttering backwards and forwards at 120 um, frames per second. And if you had the glasses on, it would also sort of be flicking backwards and forwards to give you that 3D effect. It works, yes. Is it a bit deep? Yes. But it's fun nonetheless. Here's a demonstration of how good these LCD panels are at hiding the matrix nature which makes up the picture. I'm moving progressively closer with the camera lens open wide, uh, getting ridiculously close. And what you can see, or what you can't see, is the construct of the pixels. Even here in the moving example, I'm moving ultra close, like right next to the screen. And so sorry for the angle there. And it's just amazing. Time to demo the different picture modes that this projector is capable of in both a room with some ambient light and in a dark room. I've turned the sound off on the movie so you can actually hear what the fan noise is like. Cinema Mode 1 is my favourite and we use that for almost all movies because I have the curtains closed and we generally almost always watch these movies at night time. Cinema Mode 2 is great when you need a little bit more pop in the colour. Otherwise, you get a bit more fan noise when you use this mode. So same scene again, but as you can see, a little bit more contrast in the picture, uh, albeit with brighter colours. Game mode is designed to you know, reduce the lag time between the input and the projected image with minimal processing. Uh, the fan noise is present most of the time, and as you can see in a dark room, the picture difference uh, uh, is a little bit brighter, but not spectacular. Normal mode is what Panasonic would like you to probably use with their projector because it's got a lot of lumens, uh, the colours look great, you still hit your darks, but I find that there's a bit too much fan noise for my liking, so I would only ever use normal mode if maybe there was a bit of light in the room, but it was a little bit dark too. Dynamic mode is uh, only ever used if you've got ambient light in the room, like I'm talking lights or maybe uh, windows that haven't got any curtains. The fan noise is ever present. You can hear it no matter where you sit in the home theater and you lose contrast, the grays, uh, just not a very good mode to use. Rec 709 mode is a Panasonic specification uh, calibration mode. I never use it because the colors look a bit different um, and the fan noise, well, it's kind of like Cinema 1, but I still, there's something really in QR that is not quite right about um, that Rec 709 mode and colors. Digital cinema mode is for when you're watching a TV show on the big screen. It sharpens the picture and it just becomes a little less film-like and the colors, I don't know, they look flatter, so I guess they're trying to produce the normal boost that you get on television shows. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my long-term review of this projector. At almost $3,000, I have no regrets. Great picture contrast, everything tick, tick, tick. The infrared, discrete, lack of commands, well, so be it. I can get around that by programming out with the harmony, which, speaking of which, we'll do very soon as well. Catch you next time.